Which brands are you familiar with that emit the most radiation? So like if somebody's shopping for a cell phone or a, or a personal device and they want to buy the one that has the least amount of, of radiative exposure, are there certain ones that are better buys? Not really to this day. Uh, some brands are, are slightly lower. I think the Samsung products, generally speaking, are, are slightly lower than iPhones, but you know they don't shield the antenna they don't try to they don't try to minimize if if the if they minimize cell phone radiation it would be just an artifact of how they're designed almost you know it would be almost a mistake on their part to have lower radiation so it's not part of user demand and it's not part of engineering requirements when they're creating phones so i would say that regardless of any phone that you wear on your person it wouldn't make it safe, even if it's lower EMF, to have it in your pocket, for example. So I'm I'm very uh, I'm I'm a little bit you know hesitant to say oh this brand is low EMF because some people will say okay well maybe that makes it fine that I can talk on my phone now uh, it 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 does not we don't have any safe phones on the market and what we have is some products are. Be coming to be lower EMFs, but uh, we don't even know what the safe amount of exposure is yet. So I would say, you know, that's a, a bit of a dangerous direction to take is to look for low EMF products. Instead, a change of habits and creating distance is really uh, a more reliable way to mitigate the risks. What, um, what, what do you see happening in the future? I know you can't predict the future any better than anyone else, but, um, you know, the FCC seems to be a captured, you know, regular, they're captured by the For industry, sure. just like the FDA and pharmacy. Um, but, but do we have a chance? What, what's going on? And you're in the forefront of all of this. So what, what do you see as coming out of this, that's going to be protective of folks like us and other consumers? Well, I mean, in the first place, this technology should not exist as, as it is right now. So the technology will need to be changed. It means everything will need to be replaced. There are steps that could be taken by the industry to start lowering the levels and also take action on their rollout of technologies. Uh, a, a, good examples, a good example of what happened and what could happen is the car industry. The car manufacturers were extremely reluctant to put seat belts and airbags and new technology that would make cars safer. Um, I wasn't around. I, I I'm from. I'm born in '87, but before that, it was really the public eventually became interested in safety, especially families that said, "Yeah, I mean, I I would buy a car that is safer," and eventually. The government didn't have to force the industry to put safety um, features on cars. It was, in fact, a competitive advantage to do so. So very rapidly, when one car manufacturer starting claiming I'm the safest car, and of course, you had the other car manufacturer that said, no, I am the safest car. So all of a sudden, they, com they competed on safety, and now cars are much safer than the than they ever were. And I think it's still, it's still a competitive advantage to this day, and they're getting safer and safer. So imagine if the same could happen with your phone, where you could have a phone with the lowest amount of radiation ever measured in mankind for a phone, and still great connectivity. So have the both both worlds, right? The, the the best of both worlds. I think that in the future, we can reach this point where we are much more reliant on Ethernet cables and wired technologies in many applications, because I see many, many wireless applications that are completely useless. Uh, if you had a wire, like for example, alarm systems, alarm systems can be hacked into these days, which make them pretty stupid in my mind. If you, <laughs> if hackers can get into your home and then open the door, isn't it pretty stupid or lock you in your home or things like that. And we have many examples to think that, you know, cyber uh, security risks co come from wireless also. So if you had a wire that connects your entire system, it means that no one can get in through a wireless signal. So I think that we're going to be less reliant on wireless and more on wires. And then the wireless that we will have, we be placed strategically not near people because we know that's not a good use. And also maybe the signals will be much more biocompatible 
because we will have studied which frequencies and how to engineer a wireless signal that is less biologically active. So that's a direction that it could take, but I think that it will it will be um, a mix of legal actions and then grassroots movement to demand safer technologies. And we saw it with the gluten-free um, advent. Uh, and it's there's a lot of things that are wrong with that as well. I'm very well aware that uh, like the cross-contamination, for example, is horrible. So you have celiac people buying something gluten-free, but it turns out it's full of gluten. But it still led to a societal change where awareness around certain food allergens has been increasing fast. And in fact, at one point, it became a competitive advantage for food companies to say, yeah, I'm going to show the allergens or I'm going to I'm going to do certified gluten free products, for example. So it maybe it takes just a societal shift of 10, 20 percent of cell phone users demanding a safe phone that maybe Apple will say, well, you know what, we're going to have a new line of products. And it does not make, of course, they're going to say it does not make the older phones unsafe, but these ones are more compatible with your healthy lifestyle, right? They're gonna come up yeah. with things like that. And something that I've seen is positive. I've connected with many engineers in the last few years, but especially this year, there are new companies that are emerging that are trying to compete with Apple, but we're talking talk, talking about extremely small startups that want to create safer phones, that want to create safer tablets. And I think that people that are health conscious listening to this, they're craving for these solutions because things shouldn't be unsafe. Like users shouldn't be forced to be worried about what their computer is doing to them. The computer should be safe, but that's not the case. So I think that new companies will come to disrupt the market also. And if I were Apple, I would be worried over 20 years period over if they miss the boat and don't think about health and don't think about reducing emissions, I think maybe they're going to regret it. They're going to lose a lot of market shares. And I think we're going to see a lot of new companies take this opportunity and create much safer devices for us. Yeah, that's that's a very optimistic outlook. I'm, I'm hoping you're right. And, um, you know, dr markets always drive demand, right? That's, yeah. that's the whole yeah. thing. And I think I think if we get this message out to enough people and give enough people the right amount of concern over their safety, over the safety of their families and their pets, um, then that will that will squawk enough to the people making and creating these products to give us some 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 element of greater degree of safety. It's it's sad in a, in a in a way too because you should be able to buy food and not have to worry about buying organic food. Like food should be organic organically, right? And exactly. So for the sake of food, yeah. right? It's the same thing, like you said, with your products. You should be able to buy a product that you know isn't going to cause your sperm count to go down and cause leaks in your blood brain barrier. And then you have to worry about cancer or other mental or for sure. Uh, and, you know, neurological problems, but you know, it's almost like at this point, it's an upsell. Like here's the, here's the product <laughs> but then we'll upsell you the safe product. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. Marketing. So I'm hoping everyone listening to this will call, their politicians and their local folks and their phone carriers and their phone companies and say, look, we, we don't want to be radiated to death anymore. We want you to create safe products. So let that be a shout out to all of you listening to take your own actions so that we can we can move the needle on this. We moved the needle on gluten 20 years ago. Let's move the needle on on cell phone radiation today. Well, this has been a great interview. I, I know we can talk a lot longer, but um, You've got a summit, and I think it would be probably better if people wanted to learn more about radiation from phones and other devices um, to listen to you interview some of the best experts in the world, because that's not me. I'm not the expert in this category. And I think, um, could you speak to your summit and how people could uh, could tune in? For sure. So the 2024 EMF Hazard Summit is the third edition of our annual summit. And I interviewed 20 experts on electrosensitivity and the dangers of EMFs. So we talk about solutions because some people do realize that they're sensitive and some of them are in a state where they get worse and worse every year because it's very different. It's very difficult to avoid the agent in the environment. Imagine if you are not allergic to gluten, but 
now you're allergic to phones. Where do you go in a city to not find phones? You cannot. You, you cannot find anywhere. So it, it becomes very difficult to both live where you live and then also recover and get better. So these medical doctors I've interviewed, including Dr. Neil Nathan, talk about solutions for recovery. We also have Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the presidential candidate, that talks about the FCC, the corruption of the FCC, but also the rights of electrosensitive folks. Because, of course, if a tower is uh, erected right next to your home and is blasting you and you don't feel well, what kind of recourse do you have in front of the law? So we ex we also talk about activism and, you know, how to get involved. So I hope that a lot of people tune in. It's uh, April 11 to 14. And I know you're going to have links uh, near the show notes and something like that and in your newsletter to, uh, for registrations. And the registration is free of charge. You know, it's 20 interviews, 30 to 45 minutes. And I hope that people tune in and learn something valuable. Well, fantastic. Thank you, Nick, for putting it on. And thank you for being here today and sharing your knowledge with, with my audience. It's, uh, it's been very um, enlightening and, um, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.